Welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You, the show where we learn about how to harmonize our business life with peaceful parenting. I'm your host, Kim Minch, a certified parent coach and the founder of Real Life Parent Guide. I help mothers daily try to find that work-life balance. I'm also blessed to be the mother of four sons and a daughter whom I've always felt were my greatest teachers about life. On today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to a very special guest my friend and Becoming Me While Raising You sponsor, Kelly Walling. Kelly's an attorney who specializes in standard and complex probate law, estate planning, and business law, including disputes. She has two children, Andrew, a college student, and Catherine, a middle schooler who spends a great deal of time riding and showing horses. Kelly, welcome to Becoming Me While Raising You, and thank you so much for becoming our sponsor. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I love working with you. Yay. Yes, we're going to have fun. So my first question and what I really want um, the audience to understand is tell us a little bit about your practice. How long have you been in business and what do you love doing? Okay. I have been in business for a little over 25 years and I'm not going to tell you how much because <laughs> uh, that's enough years. And um, I, I do what you said. It's probate law, which is going to court with people who have lost a loved one. I do some pretty complex issues, like I work with um, home builders and manufacturers who are buying large tracts of land, and they need to clean up the probate issues, the airship issues, when five generations have uh, held a property in this state. And that happens a lot in Texas, mm. uh, especially in the suburbs where these builders are going now. Uh, I also do estate planning, and estate planning is just helping you get your affairs in order so that when you pass away, you've got a will, you've got a guardianship for your minor children, you've got a trust for your minor children, all the things you need to do to take care of the loved ones you're leaving behind. And then in the business law field, I help people start new businesses and merge businesses, and I help people who are in business disputes, who have joined with others perhaps, and um, those others are not fulfilling their duties towards the one person I represent. Uh, what I love about what I do is that I am in a position with my own firm to choose what kind of cases I take, mm. and I make sure that the ones I take are the ones that I consider helpful to the people who need it most. Oh, I love that. I think that's such a wonderful, first of all, that you're practicing something that you love doing. And the most gratifying part is working for, you know, the people, you're, you're serving people in that way, in, in the same way that I serve the, you know, the parents that I help coach. So I, helping people helping people is a wonderful business to be in. Yeah. I love that. It is. Tell us uh, a little bit about, you know, some of the challenges that you face in the work that you do. I, I'd love to know, um, you know, what, what challenges you have and then how you work to overcome those, Kelly. Okay. Probably the, the biggest one I face is, is just having enough time to, to rest also. Rest is so big a part of anything we do. And I have seen so many people who have not learned how to rest as they're growing. And um, I make a very deliberate effort to build things into my life to do that. And I manage my time very carefully. Uh, and I make sure that I, I, I plan events. You know, I don't wait for them to happen. I plan events that help me relax. I, I, I think that's so true. I talked about this in a previous episode. Self-care is really what you're talking about. Yes. And self-care are the things that we won't take out of our, our, our routine. They are things that we build in that help us to nourish our soul, to relax, to be able to be continue to be creative and meet the needs of a demanding, you know, family life and career. I mean, they're they're just the non-negotiables. And people really, I, I hope with the last year have come to realize how important that is. And I know you, you know, you feel the same way. It's just, it's crucial to get that self-care in. 
Um, so let's shift gears a little bit and start talking about your family. Tell me a little bit about Andrew and Catherine and, and your, your life as a mom. All right. I have a son, and he is in college down in San Marcos, and he has been studying very hard because finals are here. Mm -hmm. And um, he really enjoys school and learning, and I am delighted to see that. Of course, being a lawyer, I liked school too. And then I have a daughter who's a middle schooler, and her name is Catherine. And she spends, she's in online school because it suits her schedule best because she spends six days a week writing hours and hours a day at the barn. She writes English style and she goes to shows all over the place. It keeps me very busy keeping up with her. <laughs> I imagine. Yes, so. <laughs> and that leads me right into the next question. How do you work to balance uh, you know, your law practice and this very busy middle schooler that you have? Part of it is, um, is what I was saying about planning, you know, watching your time and, um, you know, really learning how to make the most of it. Uh, I think that that has been the biggest key. The other th thing I do is that I just, I make a very deliberate decision to spend a lot of time with my daughter and so um, that puts me in a position where uh, I have to reach out to friends sometimes in ways that I wouldn't necessarily, you know, somebody might be able to go to lunch all the time with their friends. For me, I might pick up the phone and talk to them for an hour while I'm driving out to the barn to see my daughter, <laughs> you know. I mean, you got to put in what you can, right, and yes. keep those connections going. Oh, yes. I definitely. love that. Okay. So this show also, like I said, focuses on parenting, and I thought maybe we could swap our best parenting tips. So do you have a parenting tip that you'd like to share with our audience today? Yes. Listen. Listen to your children. They have so much going on inside, and they don't know what to do with all of it. And we're here to be springboards for what they need most. Mm. And if we can take the focus off of ourselves and put it onto them and, f and focus on how we can help them grow as people, and when we can listen to their pain and have an appropriate response for that instead of a, maybe a defensive response, um, I have found that has been uh, the greatest blessing I have had mm. is, is learning how to listen. Mm. I could not, <clears throat> excuse me, I could not agree more with that. Um, I say to the parents that I coach, by the time they're adolescents, you need to be listening 80% of the time and talking only 20% of the time. There's just that natural switch. And, you know, parents often say that their middle school, high school student, college age student doesn't talk to them. Well, I think that kids really do want to talk. It's a matter of knowing that they have a safe and trusted space, a space that's not going to be judgmental. So I think listening is absolutely key. The, the little tip that I want to give today for moms out there who are trying to balance these two things is to ask your child how you can best support them. So I, I think that when we um, rush in to fix or we feel like we want to fix or we have to make things better all the time, what that does is tells a child that they're not capable. So we want them to know that we're there to support them, but we want them also to think about how we can best support them. So I'll often say to my daughter, Mia, how can mom best support you in this? And she doesn't always know the answer right away, and that's okay, but it, it, it allows her to think, hey, my mom knows that I can get through this, and, but she's there to help me, but I've got to kind of figure out what I need, and that's really about building their autonomy. So I think those are two great parenting tips that we gave today. Um, Let's talk for a moment about encouraging other moms as they may be wanting to get into a new career or start a new business, or maybe that mom that um, you know has been home for many years and now she wants to get into the work world. What kind of advice do you have to give in terms of um, starting a business or, or starting back to work, her professional side? What, what tips do you have there? I would say that uh, reaching out to other women, particularly other mothers who have done the same thing, is, is key. 
uh, when I when I went to those people, I found help not just emotionally, but with things about my business I needed to do that I didn't understand very well. And uh, you know those those women when they're going through, it's just like going through motherhood with these other parents <laughs> yes. around you. You know, if you're going through birthing a business, it's the same idea of having that support from other women. Um, and that has been the most powerful thing I have done is I have surrounded myself with, with that kind of support. Mm, I could not agree more. So as we close the show, um, tell us how we can get a hold of you if we have an, a, a need that you can fulfill in your law practice. How do people get in touch with you, Kelly? You can get in touch with me at 972-839-1040, or you can reach me through my website, and that is www.capertonwallinglaw.com, and I will spell that C A. <laughs> P-E-R-T-O-N-L-A-W. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Becoming Me While Raising You. On behalf of Kelly and Walling and myself, remember mothers are the emotional barometers in their families. So taking care of you while you build your legacy is not a luxury. It's a necessity. My passion is to help moms create peaceful homes through happier, healthier relationships with their kids. If you're looking for help on your parenting journey, please reach out to me through my website, reallifeparentguide.com. Until next time, namaste.